get started and uh, just wanted to thank everybody for being here today. Um, for those of you, uh, I'm assuming everybody knows why they're here. Uh, this is part of the Pride Center San Antonio strategic planning process. And what we really want to do is to get everybody's input from a community perspective, because um, ultimately when we start offering more uh, programming and uh, initiatives in the future, we want to make sure it reflects the community and not just the small board of, of directors that um, run the daily operations of that right now. Um, so again, thank you for being here um, for this. Um, just to kind of uh, lay out a few things, we're just going to continue through the whole session up until 4 o'clock. If you do need to step out for any reason, the bathrooms are actually right through the side here. Um, if you go to your right in the gym area, there's a bathroom in there. It's a, a one-stall uh, bathroom, so uh, help yourselves to that. Cookies and water, um, help yourself as well. Um, so do that on your leisure at your, um, as you uh, need to. Um, so don't think you're going to interrupt us or not. And as new, more people start coming in, if, if anybody does arrive, then we'll just kind of sit them where we are. Um, so again, thank you for being here. Um, I did want to thank uh, Now Cast SA. Um, they are, <laughs> uh, Charlotte Ann and uh, Clayton back here um, are going to be live streaming the session today um, so that people can interact online that weren't able to be here in person. Um, so they'll basically be offering the same input that y'all are going to be offering here, um, just online. And um, myself and um, Charlotte Ann will be on there. I think there's one other person, I think Brian may be um, fielding that information from there. So um, we'll have some additional voices um, as this goes. Um, so thank you for, uh, to them. Um, they, did, they were able to offer their services uh, free of charge to us today um, through a grant um, that they received um, for LGBT work um, specifically. Um, so now CAST SA does run off of uh, public funding, uh, donations, uh, grants, things like that. So if you don't know about their organization, definitely go to nowcastsa.com, look them up and some of the other great work that they're doing here in the city uh, that brings information to our fingertips that we wouldn't normally, um, we can't go to you know, multiple things and at a time. Good thing about that as well is that they do archive their information. Um, so if you uh, don't have an opportunity to see it while it's live streaming, a lot of times you can go on there and, and see it as well. Um, so thank you to them. Uh, also thank you to Wyndham Garden Riverwalk. Um, they donated the space for us to use today. Um, they've been uh, great to us. Uh, when I needed a space, I got a Facebook IM and they said, we have something for you um, if, if you want it. And there was no if, if <laughs> I wanted it. So, uh, so thank you to them for that. And then uh, also to Wells Fargo, um, Jennifer, which I'll introduce a little bit more in a little bit, she is uh, with Wells Fargo and she is offering her services to the Pride Center um, to build up this community platform, um, again, uh, at no charge either, so uh, thank you to her. Um, those of you that may be uh, Facebooking, tweeting, or anything like that, uh, hashtag Pride Center SA um, is what you can use, and then we'll also be using that for the individuals that are streaming online and, and having an online conversation. Um, What's the wireless? Uh, wireless is Wyndham 1, uh, all lowercase, and the number 1. And uh, they're live streaming off of a hard port, so we won't interrupt them if we okay. all happen to log on at once. Um, so again, so right in front of you, you have a, a 2015 fact sheet. And this is kind of a lot of the information compiled from where when we started and where we are now, and then, of course, we'll be talking about the things today on how we can move forward in the future. Um, for those of you that are not aware of the history of uh, Pride Center, uh, back in 2009, a group of uh, San Antonio residents, uh, community leaders, um, got together in a living room and basically started talking about the idea of having a community center. Uh, for being as large of a city as we have, or we are, we didn't have one at that point. Um, so the conversation started going, um, and it went from there, and in 2011, they actually formed the board and um, started with the planning process and started uh, making themselves uh, relevant in the community. Um, so a lot of the information here on the history and, and kind of more details can be found on this fact sheet. Um, so we wanted to provide some information to you on that. Um, so basically, uh, we're here to serve the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and HIV communities. Uh, by connecting them and their families to community resources and organizations related to health, wellness, support, education, activities, and advocacy. Um, so again, the reason that you're here today is so that we could fully live up to this mission and uh, provide services to the community that are useful to them, um, and then also so that we can see what's in the community already um, so that we don't overlap. Um, so there's no need to reinvent the wheel if another organization is already offering something. That's something that we may not want to offer, but we may want to partner with them and enhance it or see what we can do as a community center um, to do that. 
Um, so that's the reason that we're here. For those of you that don't know, also we do have a community resource center right now that operates on very limited hours. Um, so we'll be looking uh, to expand our volunteer base, things like that. And when we sit, uh, pass out a survey later, um, then you'll have an opportunity to um, express your interest if you're wanting to get involved more. And there's different areas that you can get involved. So um, we'll be passing that out later. Um, so I will kind of shut up now. <laughs> so I'll turn it over to Jennifer. Actually, before I do so, um, I just wanted to also point out a couple of the board members that we do have here uh, with us today. Uh, we have Richard Farias. Uh, Richard is our current chair um, of the board, and um, Naomi Brown, and Naomi Brown is also, they've actually been two of the originals um, way back when, when they had a, a living room meeting. Um, <laughs> so they've been with us, uh, and uh, we definitely appreciate them for their service. And then, um, and I don't even know if I introduced myself, I'm Robert Salcido. <laughs> I'm on a current board and on the executive team as well. Um, and um, Brian Calderman, you raise your hand. He's been instrumental in helping uh, me set up these events. I just wanted to thank him as well. Um, he's not currently on the board yet. <laughs> Hopefully we can change that. <laughs> And, that, and then Marlon Anderson as well. Uh, Marlon is on a, a planning committee uh, that's helping us with these events. And so uh, thank you to them and, and all of y'all for being here. But I'll turn it over to Jennifer Mori Moriarty. Moriarty, help me out. I always say it wrong. You have to always say it wrong. And uh, like I said, she is with Wells Fargo and she is uh, graciously donating her time and uh, expertise to us to help us through this process. So thank you, Jennifer. Robert. So welcome. Um, Thank you guys for coming out on what is actually a really lovely day. So I'm sure it was tempting to um, maybe hang out at home and do some stuff in your yard. Um, so we are going to be here till 4 o'clock. This is going to be a very engaging session. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to participate. And these are kind of our meeting norms. We start with who is in the room. You guys are in the room. We're going to get started. If you need to step out and take a phone call, um, take a potty break, you know, get a snack, um, just Feel free to do that. I mean, you don't even have to raise your hand. Um, and everyone's wisdom is needed for the wisest results. So this is really seeking your input. I'm just here to move us through a process that gathers everybody's information. The first session was fabulous. Some really great ideas came out of it. And that's going to inform the planning committee and the board as they move forward with building a, a three to five year strategic plan for the organization. Um, every idea, concern, and perspective is valued. There is no bad input. Um, so let it flow. We're going to do a brainstorming. I'm going to ask you just to do a brain dump of all of your ideas and then we're going to talk about all of them. So everybody's voice is going to be up on the board and we're going to build consensus around that in response to a focused question, which is really what should the Pride Center be doing for our community. Um, one conversation at a time. It gets a little hard. You'll see me go like this, which means I'm hearing too many voices and I'm having trouble capturing um, what everybody's saying. So if I raise my hand, you know, I'm just, I'm just struggling to decipher um, one person over another, which is great. That's just, a, that's just an indication of a lot of energy in the room. Um, if you're somebody who's kind of quiet and tends to hold back, push yourself to be engaged and uh, make sure your voice is heard. If you tend to be a real chatty Kathy like me, um, sometimes pull back and make sure that other people at your table can get their their perspective in as well. And if you got electronics going, um, mute or manage them as much as you can. But I understand we all have our electronics out in front of us all the time. So um, I was doing something yesterday, and the phone started ringing on the table. And I looked at the group like, can I answer the phone? And it was my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that was my ringtone. Um, you have name tents in front of you. And if you would just make sure you put your name on them front and back, so if people behind you um, can't read them, make sure that they can see your name um, on both sides. So I want to start just by um, finding out who's in the room and go around and ask you to just introduce yourself um, if you're representing an organization and involved with an organization that you want to share, uh, please do that and we'll just go kind of quickly around the room. Can we start over here? I'm Victoria Garcia. I work for the City of San Antonio, the Department for Health for Creative Development and we fund all the arts agencies. Um, I'm a community member, my son is gay, and he works for the AIDS um, Health Foundation, which is a nonprofit. I'm sure you know, some of you know about it. And so they are trying to collaborate with people more locally. And he's, I'm in the Bay Area right now, and so I'm kind of here to kind of introduce them a little bit more and get to know what, what resources we have here 
right now. I'm Ron Anderson. Um, I am in program development with a nonprofit health and human services organization here in San Antonio. I'm Shinda. I am the medical director for the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District, and so we're here to try to. We, one of the things we like to say is health and all policies. So we talk about some of the overlaps that there may be in price center goals and health goals. I'm Brian Halderman, um, volunteer with the Pride Center. My full-time job is with the TSA and civic engagement. Yeah. My name is Delaney Golan. I'm uh, with Tommy Atkinson, who's running for mayor. And I'm also uh, the president of the Bear County Young Democrats. And both of my roommates are gay. And I'm really happy to be here, and this is also a really impressively uh, coordinated meeting. So I'm really excited to hear what you And I'm Tommy X. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. Glad to be here, glad to uh, help in being uh, the best we can be. I think my track record at the uh, Commissioner's Court pretty well speaks for itself. I've uh, walked the talk, and this time of year is when people usually start to just talk. <laughs> but anyway, I'm here to listen and learn a little bit and uh, just want to make sure I popped in to say hello. Thank you. I'm Tom Tompkins. I live across the street from Delaney. <laughs> um, I am in social services. I was in television for 30 years, but the reason why I'm here is because I believe the world needs every individual to thrive. And since I thrive, I want to share that with others. So I run groups for uh, people teaching them how to overcome their fear of public speaking. I'm going to start a, a series on the psychology, the Wounding and Healing of Men, uh, which is a union perspective on uh, personal growth. Um, I do a lot of things. I'm just kind of looking for more to do. Uh, my job is a social worker. I'm in homeless services. Robert Salcedo, I haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, although I'm with Pride Center, uh, which feels like full-time job sometimes, um, my real job, or my other job, I should say, is I'm film organizer for Equality Texas. I'm Peggy Curie, and I uh, wanted to come here today representing uh, a social club that's in town, uh, Alamo Couples. I'm happy to hear about the work that's being done here. I'm Large Reed and I'm with her. <laughs> we're partners of 25 years and we're interested in community. Everything that goes on. Hi, I'm Lee. I'm a third year medical student and we are trying to start up a student run free clinic. So this is kind of a great opportunity to kind of spread the word and hopefully get that clinic off the ground in about six months. Hi, I'm Fai. I'm a first year medical student and I'm with her. <laughs> um, hi, my name is uh, David Yip, and uh, I just recently moved back here to San Antonio to be close to the family. And uh, I was involved a lot with the groups in uh, Rochester, New York, where I went to college. So um, I'm just trying to find in the community and try to get involved and see what I can help here in San Antonio. Because I remember there wasn't a lot for me when I was growing up. <coughs> Eli like Garza. Uh, I work for Toyota Motor Manufacturing and I work in the HR and being with the panel here. I uh, are the vice chair for Spectrum, which is a new LGBT business partner that we just got started in uh, July. I'm trying to get more information to get back to uh, my company. And I'm Bremel and I'm with Eli and I'm the chair of uh, Spectrum, which is a uh, business partner group for Toyota. And um, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm Reed and I'm here to help them all. <laughs> <laughs> Man, a few words. <laughs> I'm, I'm Richard Fudius and i um, really just grateful to see all of you all out here on a Saturday. Like Robert said, I'm the uh, current chair, uh, but uh, um, Naomi and I were there at some of the first conversations six years ago, which is hard to believe it's been that long. Uh, but my uh, full-time job is at San Antonio College, where I'm a 
the student activities director. And uh, I got involved in the community through the student group there, and uh, just really excited about all the possibilities that could come out of a lot of partnerships. So, thank you all. Uh, I'm Naomi Brown, and I am on the board of the Pride Center, and was in the living room in 2009, and we were talking about it. Uh, my full-time job, I'm a social worker, I work professional development and training uh, human resources, and I do uh, safe zone training for the San Antonio Police Department and others. I'm Steve Delgado, um, I'm from San Antonio. I haven't really been active in the community uh, for a long time. When I was in college, uh, high school, I did volunteer for the old gay switchboard, which is a little room because <laughs> big as that window right there. <laughs> one phone call, one phone. <laughs> so um, when I found out this community center was established, I said, well, let's try and see what happens. <laughs> I'm Kelly Hall, and I'm a middle school teacher. Um, at an alternative center. Um, so what brought me here is I'm actually a master's program for school counseling and I'm strongly advocating kids that are in the LGBT community, um, making sure that as a school teacher that we make sure that we are servicing those students because um, I feel like there's a lot of lack there. What brought me here specifically was I had to communicate with and join into a community that I'm not part of. I'm a married heterosexual woman, so. I'm not part of it technically, um, but also just absolute interest being part of the community and joining in. And I think it's something that we need. I grew up in North Carolina where it was not very uh, prominent or very okay to be gay, and my best friends are both now a lesbian and a gay man living out in the world, and we were the trio of best friends. I'm talking too much. I'm a teacher. I'm here. <laughs> I wanted to check. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm Charlotte Ann Lucas, and um, thank you for the terrific um, introduction, Robert. Um, the other reason that we are here is because we are a 501c3 nonprofit, and our um, mission is to promote and facilitate an inclusive civic conversation. Uh, I'm Marlon Anderson, and my uh, full-time paid job is I work for Northeast Lakeview College uh, out in uh, University City uh, as the director of student activities. Richard and I have the same job at two different campuses. <laughs> um, uh, and um, uh, I got interested in Pride Center and uh, this process uh, because of, um, I think, uh, of what I see happening um, just the need, number one, and the potential uh, for San Antonio uh, to have a thriving uh, pride center that is very, very much inclusive and supportive and um, and tries to fit the needs of the, its community, uh, ever-changing community, and it is ever-changing. So uh, I thought, uh, it, what, what a great time for this group to, to kind of listen from, uh, to hear from our community of how the needs have changed uh, and what we can do in terms of our planning process to, to have the center address those changes. I'm Aaron. Um, this is my one year anniversary here in San Antonio. I moved here from Chicago to take a job at USAA last year. Came by myself, so it was a really big decision, and left a lot of friends and family behind. Um, I was president of the student LGBT group at the University of Illinois for two years, and I was involved in Chicago in the community center and a lot of the sports organization that they do. So really glad to be here and look forward to getting involved in the community more. Thank y'all. What a great uh, group of very diverse individuals and interests, so I appreciate that. You know, our primary purpose today is to really inform what the Pride Center should be doing. And I know from the first session, there's a lot of LGBT-serving organizations in our community. So I wanted to capture that again in this session. And instead of me scribing, which got a little crazy because everybody was shouting them out, um, I've got some sheets of paper on your table, and so as a table, if one of you would agree to be the scribe, 
and use these markers and just jot down the organizations that you know of that are in the community serving the LGBT trans transgender community, whoever you think needs to be on these papers. There's, there's several of them and we'll put them up here and we'll probably have some duplicates across the table that write with the markers a little bit big like this and just list them. You don't need to list their mission statement and what they do, just, just their name. So I'm going to give you guys about 10 minutes to do that real quickly. Um, one of you at the tables take on the marker and the paper and then we'll put them up here and see who we might be missing. <laughs> I've been about 10 years, and I didn't say that. So, what organization do you think? Throw out some. Some of the LGBT support. I don't know of any. See, you said Spectrum is the name of the group you guys belong to. And that's it, like the employee resource group? Yes. Yeah, I know. I have no idea. I do have like it's probably one of the more numbers. Yeah, I was going to say, we're not organizing that. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do this training. So, we're going to have to do
LGBTQ, Thrive San Antonio AIDS Foundation, Beat AIDS, AARC, Mujeres Unidas, San Antonio LGBT Chamber, Rainbow Families, Gala SAC, Alliance, Our Lady of the Lake University, OutInSA.com, and Magazine. Is that right? All right. 
Uh, San Antonio AIDS, Beat AIDS, BSDU, Stonewall Democrats, or Hello, is that right? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. College LGBT, HRC, Quality Texas, San Antonio Diablo, San Antonio Roadrunners, Alamo Couples, Rainbow Garden Club, P Flag, uh, TGRA Esperanza, Pride SA, Stonewall Democrats, UT Health Science Center, San Antonio Pride, Thrive, Haven for Hope, Fiesta Youth, Fiesta U, LGBT Chamber, UTSA Pride, HRC, LGBT LULAC, B Day, San Antonio Project Hot, San Antonio Queer Collective. Um, here's a new one Newton's News, B Day, AIDS Foundation, Health Department, MSM, HIV Testing, Stonewall. Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. What a that group. San Antonio Shambhala Center, out in SA. Um, Esperanza, Fiesta Youth, Saga Project Embrace, Pride Center, Mujeres Unidas, Thrive, LGBT Chamber, Dignity, P Flag. Any, any ones that we're missing that we want to make sure we get up there? Pretty, pretty good list. What's the name of the group that just started that is doing the um, the, the homeless youth? Homeless right. 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 It is right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. It's a big list. So, what are some of the high points in the LGBT community um, that are being addressed by these organizations? What are the good things that are going on? Young people, teenagers, they need a lot of help and they're getting help, I think, from a lot of these groups. I think most of these organizations are addressing needs um, for the community that weren't being addressed by mainstream organizations. What I, I'm going to say mainstream. Education and awareness. Social. Social. Something other than bars. Alamo Couples is a social club for gay and lesbian couples in committed relationships. And so we meet to play together, and it gives us a, a chance to share our couplehood um, that's not accepted in the mainstream, and a place to, to shore each other up in our relationships. Advocacy. What are some of the low points and challenges for the LGBT community? Cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Communication is one too. Right. I was There's the same. no central that and way we we our weight was on Marlin because we did I've been here ten years and I was like I can name Pride right. SA and that's and the AIDS Foundation and and that's um, it's a matter of getting the word out if maybe there was a central location <coughs> like right I say or something because there is I was thinking earlier it, one of the highs is there's just such a diverse amount of you can go running you can play flag football you can get medical attention you know there's what there's a lot of different age you know think things you know but I don't know about most of them so it doesn't help if nobody knows about it. I think of maybe making sure that the organizations know how to deal with newcomers when they come to their meetings. Mm -hmm. Like some sort of, um, I've heard a few stories here and there of people going to a meeting for, I'm not going to name specific organizations because it's here and there, but they go to a meeting and it, it feels like a coterie mm -hmm. closed off, mm -hmm. doesn't feel mm -hmm. welcome to new members. Mm -hmm. and so, uh, yeah. so where do you see collaboration in community? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Natalie? <laughs> yes, I 
not a good sign. <laughs> I think I think we are in some sense. So I don't know if it was up there, but pro pro SA pro SA pro SA is a is a group of faith leaders in the community who are concerned about the pastoral care of LGBT individuals in the community and trying to communicate and bring together the faith community. They usually do a pride service in the summer every year around pride. Um, and do a, I think they do the, um, or they coordinate on the World Aid Day event. So they do a number of things like that. But so I would say that's that's a hopeful sign. I think. Well, I'm thinking about it. I understand why a lot of the clubs and bars weren't really put up there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, some of the events that have gone on have been in support, I and mean, they help to advertise to get the word out. In fact, there's that last event that's coming up. I think that's in LTE. Yes. yes. So, I mean, we don't have them up there, but they do collaborate quite often. They're open if groups go to them to request, but some are hesitant to believing that it gives the wrong connotation. And I guess another reason that the bars were kind of left out is primarily because we're trying to focus in on the organizations that support us. Everyone kind of thinks when they think of the gay community of the bars. And that's not the first thing. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff going on in the community. Well, but at the same time, it's changing the concept of what people believe the bars stand for and what they can't do. So when we all believe that that's the only thing that they are good for, then they even lose themselves in, into, the, into what we make them. Where do you think there might be duplication of services among an organizations? There are quite a few different needs foundations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure that they're all very, very good and have their own, their own specialties and special communities that they're a part of. But at the same time, you have so many organizations focusing on the same thing without collaboration, constant collaboration, it starts becoming a disconnect. So I'm the one who added health department and some HIV testing. We have a, a new grant and we're, we're trying to get out there and, and it, we're finding that, you know, oh, this group has this bar and this group has, the, and like it's hard to break in and even get a place to, to just offer free testing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I think of those same lines as well as when you have all these uh, organizations and everything, a lot of times when it comes to fundraising and um, seeking out donors and things like that, there's a lot of overlap because there's so many organizations tapping into the same community. I think that causes a, a lot of uh, the overlap there in the communication of services as well. But at the same time, because even though there's so many free HIV testing needs, foundation and staff, from our survey, there was around 55% of people who never had HIV testing mm -hmm. ever in their life. Mm -hmm. So that is a very, very high percentage of people who could have a, like HIV and not know it and be spreading it around. And so this, there might be a lot of duplicates, but it's because it's not getting to the right, I guess, communities. Okay. Question. Well, maybe there should be collaboration among the like groups yeah. to have a main focus is HIV testing that out to the community via the bars, via the other social organizations. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, general mixers for the other social organizations like a, a rush. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. um, it could be alcohol, non alcoholic, it doesn't matter. Something like that. You know? but, and I know. Uh, when we have our Pride Festival, there's a lot of organizations out there. Um, that, and that's a once a year thing. You know, maybe you need more. A different type over there. You know, I don't know. It's Randy Bear um, says uh, collaboration with LGBT Chamber through networking events. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So where do you think there's opportunities for services that aren't being offered by these organizations? Is there an opportunity for new services? Okay, so from the survey we did, uh, there was about, 
think 50 something percent that indicated that they were interested in mental health counseling, mm -hmm. um, which is what we're also going to be trying to offer at the uh, free student, the student run free clinic. Um, so that seems to be a need, but I'm not sure if it's being addressed. Is it going to be an LGBT clinic? Uh huh. Yeah. So we focused on targeting the LGBT population and our main goal is to kind of connect them into a larger healthcare network because we don't want them to come to just to us because we can't handle sure. right. that. So it would be a way for us to connect through the Affordable Care Act, through um, CareLink, Care Link, mm -hmm. if they're the county residents. Um, so just connect them to the larger resources. We're also compiling a list of um, physicians and saying some of their LGBT Yes. And that was a huge request at our last um, community engagement. Yes, right. was that that was big. Right. That was big. There were horror stories all over the room. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let's let's talk about our focus question for today. And this is what we're going to ask you guys to work in small groups and brainstorm on responding to. Given all these organizations and the services that are in community. What could the Pride Center San Antonio do that would be of value to the LGBT community? What should they be focused on? And so what I'd like to ask you to do is to just kind of individually brainstorm for about three or four minutes. There's um, pieces of paper in front of you and pens. And just talk, just do a brain dump. What could the Pride Center be doing that's done in collaboration with others, that's not being done? that whatever it is um, just do a brain dump on that for about three or four minutes and then i'll give you instructions for working um, in small groups <laughs> everybody clear on the question Robert? 
Yeah, and then Tom, could you work with Delaney? That's all right, Robert. And Faye, Body? Body, is that right? Yes. And Lee, if you would work together? Okay. If the three of you at that table would work together. Um, you two together, and you two together. And then, what's going on over here? We are ready to go online. How about three of you? And the four of you. That's real name. I like it. And the sleepy kid, you know, I don't know how much you put together. And here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do, okay? I want you to share your ideas, and then I want you to each each team, some of you, there's three on a team, I want you to write one idea per card using these, okay? So I want you to, one idea per card, Three to eight words per card, three to eight words, not one word, not 20 words, three to eight words. Write big and bold so when we put the cards up here we can see all of them. And I want each team to come up with five cards, five ideas, okay? So we'll take about 10 minutes to do that. So share what you come up with together and then together come up with five ideas, so five cards that we can share and put up here answering this question. What could the Pride Center do that would add value, or be a value to the LGBT community? <laughs> the main theme of my thoughts were like having a common ground for all of those organizations that the Pride Center can do and take a place of the um, kind of where you connect all of these different things. I go and say, I have this issue, where should I go? And they can direct you. So I would be kind of where I am right now. So that's one of the things that we're going to do. Three to five minutes is going to be better at times. That's a good way of that was, I mean, I, a lot of it was like, you know, connecting and having a common ground. Um, I think there's definitely need for more organized analytics, uh, safe space for uh, uh, physical fitness and pleasure in the community, <laughs> as well as a safe space for meeting others that enjoy similar sports. Um, I thought another area would be fundraising awareness and partnerships. I'm not sure. I'm pretty new still, but I think one thing that might benefit the community is the group being kind of a central fundraising source and choosing what groups they would like to partner with. If they were able to be a primary source for raising funds, then the board or the, the group as a collective could determine what three or four groups they would like to partner with each year. Uh, and then it would be called the community embrace the idea of coming together. I think it would all yeah. I think fundraising is hard for individual groups to do. It. There's not one central. There's not one. If there's a source that is known in the LGBT community for fundraising, it helps. So we here online to create an online opportunity for organizations to come online to host and create events and activities so that the general community can go to and take part in the organizing and they can see what variety of organizations can you tell if there's people
um, got rebirthed <laughs> under them yeah, as a service that they provide. And and She's the wife of the training for the different organizations. They also do uh, capacity building grants for nonprofits. So, um, for those of you that are ready to share, I'd like you to, out of the five or so cards that you put together, come up with your two clearest cards, two clearest ideas. <laughs> <laughs> they're all clear, they're all fabulous, I know. We're going to get them all up, but we're going to do it in stages. Your marker of verse is... Yeah. <laughs> I see. I wonder if that's okay. Give another one? I won't point them out because I need to respond. No, no, that's nothing. It's fine. Who else am I missing? Can I get yours? Did you get what? Your cards? Two clearest cards? Oh, the two. Just the two. The two clearest. Yeah, we were big on this. Thank you. I have one. 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 I have all right, let's see what you guys came up with in response to what could the Pride Center do that would be a value to the LGBT community. Leadership development programming or linking. Resume and career readiness training. Speakers Bureau. LGBT database. Become the hub of the community. Central fundraising source, resource directory, hard copy and online, facilitate coordination among organizations, provide meeting space, act as a learning, I'm sorry, act as a clearinghouse, promote LGBT events slash calendar, online directory for services slash groups, easily searchable, Advocate the UT Health Science Center SA LGBTQ clinic. <laughs> <laughs> no agenda there. <laughs> Can we add to a database of all of the acronyms? <laughs> Become center of operations. Make sure every org is on the same page. Directory of community resources, healthcare providers. Provide a large community space for meetings and networking. Any clarity needed on any of these ideas? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to develop clusters of similar ideas in response to this question, but we want to start with pairs. Pairs means two. <laughs> There's always somebody who's trying to get me to make clusters. Let me finish the pair. So I'm just telling you. So where do you see pairs of similar ideas? Um, uh, become the hub of the community and facilitate coordination amongst organizations. Right up to the left a little bit. Left, 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 down. Down, right there. Hub. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, provide a large community space and then provide meeting space. Uh -huh. Where's the provide meeting right space? There. Right there, your hands on. I'm too close to the wall. Resource directory and online directory. One's, to, one's right under you. Right there. Yeah. To your right, to your right, to your right. right. One right else. One more right. Right. That one and under the star in the middle. Resource mm -hmm. directory says. Got it. Thank you. Uh, LGBT database and the directory of community resources. Just, just to comparing them. Mm -hmm. back. And then over there. Underneath oh, the axis. To your right. Oh. Underneath the axis. Right. You're right. Other way. Sorry. Other way. 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 Other Mm -hmm. 
maybe clearing house and central fundraising? See? That's the beauty of the sticky wall. We can rearrange them. Promote LGBT events, maybe, and advocate for the Science Center. Resume career readiness and become center of operations. I think center of operations fits under the other uh, two are in yeah. yeah. the black circle. So they don't belong anywhere else because they're not big hair. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but we're getting close. So would you pull out two more cards that are different than what you see up here? <coughs> dances, movie nights, etc. Reach out to the community, better advertising. Bus trips to City Hall, Capitol to advocate. Education slash outreach for LGBT allies. Bring school districts together to address concerns. Safe space training. Resources for seniors. Any clarity needed on the new cards? You see new pairs. Because I'm into clustering now, if you don't see new pairs. I think sort of hotline switchboard and drop in center for referrals could be paired. Communication about legislation and politics and bus trips to City Hall and the Well, this is like any clue of advocacy that we're going to do, we're going to need information. So the first thing, 
political though, because it's medical. Well, medical, yeah. It's just can medical. I ask for a clarification on that part? Then can we add demographic? Would that be demographic? Yeah, yeah. demographics. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Center for the benchmark for helping yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. So this is what we have. We know that so many families are here. We know there's kids. We know so many youth are below the poverty level, are homeless, right. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, that's hard to get. I know it's hard to get, but. It could also be used to promote uh, the community to employers to say we've got all of these resources available. <laughs> yeah. Do you see other cards that go with this idea? So if you're thinking about it from a pride center perspective and they're thinking about what we what would we do to add value, they might be organizing themselves around what are the common activities that we would be working on and how might we maybe organize our committees. So that might be a, a, a thoughtful way to cluster some of this. I mean, I think the coordination of organizations on the community could be to add, reach out to the community, which is down here. That's another one we can cluster with it. Yeah. Um, and maybe education you outreach for LGBT allies could be added to that. And the data that so what is this about then, this one? Centralizing effort, I don't know, centralizing effort. Centralizing effort. Um, the calendar could move over there, maybe. And I think when, when we originally wrote under the second, under the circle, we're act as a clearinghouse, I think that we were speaking more of like the hub, mm -hmm. like to bring all the organizations yeah. together. Do you mean to move it over? You can yeah. get a central file. Okay. So you put the calendar. Calendar. Where was the calendar? Where was the calendar? calendar. Under the number sign. Like, yeah, the Promote LBJ. This one? No, no. Under the hashtag. Under the the pound sound. The pound sound. The hashtag. The hashtag. I don't even know what they are. The tic-tac-toe board. Okay. Thank you. Clearly, I'm not a hashtag. You can start a new pair with the mentorship for youth and the bring school districts together to have a younger yes. demographic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So is this about, what is this one about then? Youth outreach. Youth outreach. outreach. Okay. It's about youth. What about adding the LGBT clinic and wellness and sports together? And that one can be about health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Health and wellness. It's about health? Um, and wellness. The dedicated social events could go under like the provide large community space for networking and meeting. This one? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. About, uh, that way it could be networking and also social events, just getting together. This social? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I think it's more than social. Though. I know. It's like, it's you know, we'll come back and name it to I make sure space. that it's... I think it's more about space. But. Resume and career might go under the youth, mm -hmm. even though it could be broader than you. Mm -hmm. Well, if I go under youth, I don't want to write the speaker's bureau and, and we should... Yeah, I think it goes there. there. Speaker's oh, bureau, maybe under the leadership development. Which one? Well, it's, it's already, it's already there, but it's now. kind of debate on which one it goes to. Well, you know what? Training for different organizations could go under the leadership development, yeah. resume, yeah. career. Yeah. 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 This one? Yeah. 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 So what's this about? Um, <laughs> it's about training. 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 Okay. Training. 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 Special training. Yeah. Yeah. Community development. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's this one about? Drop-in center for referrals, active hotline, resources for seniors. It's information. Would that be the same one? That's under the hub. That's under the hub. All that goes under the hub. All this goes under the hub. Yes, Along with the center for center of operations. Yeah. Center of operations. That all goes together. Yeah. Okay. And really, the next one, the social. Could be subsumed under hub too. Uh -huh. Well, mm. it could, but I think it's important to have a, se a separate group to really focus because that's really about bringing everything together, and that's really about creating a separate event, sort of. You know, like I think yeah, that you're saying, but. Doable. Doable. So what about the the database demographics card that's hanging out here? Does it belong? I think somewhere? it goes with the hub. Well, I, think I, think I, think I was going to suggest that it goes there and that becomes advocacy, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I feel like data collection is 
such its own thing and maybe is valued as its own thing, especially in the increasingly data-driven world we live in. Well, what I'd like to do what is are you gonna do that, with the data? The data also could be used for that central fundraising issue. Mm -hmm. It could be used for grant writing. Grant writing. Grant writing. Yeah. Well, what I'd like to see under oh, actually is historical records. Because if we keep the database going and we start grant that generating history, but something else we discussed in another card we have over here is about keeping historical records. That no, it was mentioned. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, right we don't have history. archives here. Yeah, we have some. So you still have cards in front of you. Yes. Yes. <coughs> so the little symbols, many of which I can't describe apparently. If you would um, mark the cards that you have with those symbols, and then just bring them up and put them up. Um, in the cluster that they belong. And then we're going to come back and just have a discussion about what these opportunities look like for the pride set. <laughs> you can hand them to me or you can put them up. Yeah, you want to play with them. Yeah. 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 I tried. Kind of looks like. Uh, Did you try to draw it? Part of clubs. What's that? Yeah. Did you try to draw it? It's almost like the Kosa symbol. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not hard to. It's not hard to. might find that. So I'm going to read the cards again for us. Uh, facilitate coordination among organizations. Become the hub of the community. Reach out to the community. Better advertising. Education outreach for LGBT allies. Central fundraising source. Act as a clearinghouse. Promote LGBT events slash calendar. Drop in center for referrals. Focus on connecting resources together. LGBT organization fairs on a regular basis. Be better at connecting with local orgs. Become a center of operation to make sure every org is on the same every org is on the same page. Add to hotline and switchboard. Resources for seniors. Resource for LGBT groups and organizations. Get other organizations on the same page and resource center. Do those all represent the same 
idea when we articulate to the prices <coughs> what they could do? David? Actually, when we're looking at it, there some of the items that are underneath the hub look like they should have gone under directory. From okay. what we already have under directory, such as the resources for seniors, um, resources for LGBTQ organizations, and we already have up there the directory of community resources, healthcare providers, and so on. So you're right. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> but it seems like it seems to be a, a breakdown between the two. Okay. Drop in center for referrals. Yeah, drop in center for referrals, but also I feel it also in the directory. No, but a directory is like a, you can <coughs> drop in on a directory. It's either a full person thing online that you. The drop in is personal contact. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the education outreach for LGBT allies could possibly go under the training section. Mm -hmm. okay. It looks like all education that, that the Speakers Bureau, Bureau that those efforts <coughs> of educating Leadership ourselves, yeah. they're all related to education. Okay. So if we were going to name this and describe what this service would be, what would we be saying the Pride Center could do? Here's another way of looking at it. I mean, Pride Center could. I think one of the things that this really speaks to me about is the, is the community needs a piece of things. <coughs> we need somebody to help us bring, up, bring us along and kind of heal some of the fractured wounds that have been there. And that's a hard job to do in that house. That we want to put that on one board, but um, at least getting the ball rolling in terms of trying to bring people together on a regular basis to coordinate what we're doing in support of the community and for the community. Can you um, synthesize that into three to eight words as a title for that column <laughs> in response to the question? And this is where we really want to see you guys. What do you want to be as a sign that you're in consensus about that title? The jazz hands. Bobbleheads, is it Giga? Just raise your hand. Did you have a question? Well, one thing I wanted to say was it seems like that all of the different organizations, it seems like there is a lot of fracturing in the community. Mm -hmm. So nobody's getting their message out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And it seems like if the Pride Center wanted to become a, a, uh, an important part of San Antonio, that Doing something that would be a benefit to all these organizations would be a way that they could do that. So if, if, if we focus on something like the directory and offer to have everybody in one place where they can be found and maybe piggyback a calendar on top of that, then it becomes a focal point. Who could, who could, who could uh, decide not to participate <coughs> if they wanted their information? What does that look like as a title? Provide directory and database? What would that look like that they would be doing for the community? To, to yeah, add local. Yeah. yeah, it seems like a lot of these are around unification. So this idea about the idea about a directory. But we're going to title each one of these clusters. Did you say faci just facilitate? Facilitate, facilitate uh, organ organizations? Facilitate organizations. The yeah, Pride Center be, could facilitate LGBT organizations. Yes. And all of those things are facilitating, really. They're helping the groups. Maybe it's not just organizations, but individuals. Facilitate community. Facilitate community coordination. Facilitate community <coughs> coordination. What y'all what y'all sign when you hear a title that you think represents all these ideas. Is it going to be a thumbs up? Okay, David says it's a thumbs up. So I'm looking for most of you to give me a thumbs up when you hear the title that works for you. Resource center that facilitates and coordinates. Resource center that facilitates and coordinates. Well, we're looking at just that one. Just that one. So we're looking where Pride Center could, and then the remainder of that title. Yeah. Nice that. Yep. Build community. Pride Center could build community. Pride Center could. I think I'm still in favor of the facilitate community coordination. Facilitate community coordination. And collaboration. And collaboration. The thing about the word coordination just sounds like it's kind of a power. Like we 
when they become the power center. <laughs> I don't know, that might have resistance. Facilitate community that, resources. It's more like a service. We want to be a service to the community to bring. bring you like the word facilitate? It's a little technical sounding. But a little technical <laughs> Convene? What are other words for facilitate convene. or coordinate? Convene. Build community, convene. Convene, I'll Private center could provide a centralized location for information. Private yes. center could provide centralized center location for location, location for information. Just call it hub. That's what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> really? Provide a hub for the community for the community. I think hub does it. Okay. Hey, lesbian. Private center could provide community. a hub for the community. Hub. Private center could provide a hub for community. That's not a pretty word, but... <laughs> I'm looking for thumbs. What about a home? Ah, uh, I love home. Um, I don't know if you see. Home. always the hardest. So let's talk about um, your directory. Directory of community resources and healthcare providers. Online directory for services, groups, easily searchable. Create an online board for organizations, resource directory, hard copy and online. Central source of community news and outreach. Create published resource lists. Resource for LGBT groups and organizations. Resources for seniors. What would that look like that the Pride Center could do? Provide a central <coughs> directory of resources. Provide a central directory of resources. Yeah, current current directory of resources. Provide a current and central directory. Yeah, yeah. Current, 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 current. Provide a current directory of resources. I do like any comprehensive though because it, it, it goes with the hub feeling, you know, yeah. has everything. programming or linking, resume and career readiness training, training for different organizations, career and vocational assistance for trans community, LGBT job fair and career resources link, speaker series, local and national people, education outreach for LGBT allies. Community education and development events. Community education and development. development. Mm -hmm. I see. I like that, but I see two sort of two branches yeah. here. One would be internal development right. for the LGBT community themselves and support. Mm -hmm. The other, I think, is more of an outreach to the broader right. San Antonio region about yeah. developing allies and right. educating mm -hmm. them about the needs of the LGBT community. Sure. So, I don't know if there should be two columns, but I see it sort of in two different ways. Well, maybe at some point. But mm -hmm. yeah. Right now, the, the, uh, the resources that go into this would be similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good community education. Community education and development? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sticky board is not going to stick. The whole house is not. The whole You guys are good at this naming stuff. What about the social stuff? Provide a large community space for meetings and networking. Provide meeting space. Host dedicated social events. This type of event. What do you want the Pride Center to do in the future? The same thing as community education and development. To provide a community yeah. space. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I think providing a home is sort of like also 
It has social events, events, space, space, and then it talks about events as well. Networking space. Providing space for yeah. gathering space. I agree. Those top two are home. Mm -hmm. Could be under the home. Honestly, I kind of like the hub title better for that one. Provide a home for the community. I don't want to ruin it all. You can shut me down. I'm just saying. Do <laughs> <laughs> you think some of these go over and hub? I just think gathering space might be. Provide a gathering yeah. space? Right, so I could provide a gathering space. Provide a gathering space? Safe yeah. gathering space. Yeah. Safe gathering space. Uh -huh. there you go. Yeah. Have you all seen the where they're at now? We would be kind of like one of those clown cars in that office. <laughs> <laughs> but that will change. All right, database. What does this look like for the Pride Center in the future? Centralized archives, historic records, LGBT, LGBT database, demographics. It's research and demographics. Right. Is it uh, research right. to maintain demographics? On the on, uh, on San Antonio or yes. in Bear County LGBT community? Up to date research and demographics. Yes. Research and maintain? What about the history? Right. <laughs> research and maintain demographics and history? Does that do it? Are you guys being <laughs> <laughs> so research and maintain and graphics. Research research center. So we can provide a research center. Like this right now. I think it's finishing this sentence. Uh, this is it? And, uh, research and maintain demographics uh, and history of LGBT community? Uh, uh, Does that work? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have advocacy, bus trips to city hall, capital to advocate, improve communication about legislation and politics. Do they live anywhere else or are they their own? I think it's important for them to be on their own so they don't get lost somewhere else. Okay. Um, Could put under community education and development, but I see your point too. How mm -hmm. right. it's important for it to be. Well, it comes back to that. You know, it's it's important to educate, but it's we have the education of our internal community and the education of the external community. This one definitely goes for uh, education of the external community. Okay. I don't. I guess. The, I'll just say what I'm thinking out loud. But the, the challenge I guess I have with that is uh, I think we already have pretty good organizations doing that work in the community. So, I mean, I think the center would want to support that work. Yeah. Like, I mean, quality support. Texas, would it be Los support Alabama, advocacy? Aransa. Yeah, I think it's more, I would see the center, or I would advocate that the center do be take more of a supportive role than be the lead agent in that kind of mm -hmm. So is it support advocacy efforts? Yeah. This, it's a five hundred one. Yeah, we're so to Brian's point. We have to. We can't take the lead, yeah, right? But well, we can disseminate information, right? So you uh, can and we can provide support action. advocacy efforts. Yes. Does that work? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And help. Yeah. The UT Health Science Center LGBTQ Clinic and Wellness and Sports. Promote health and wellness. Promote health and wellness? Yeah. Trying to change it up. <laughs> <laughs>
And the last one was about youth, mentorship support for youth, and bring school districts together to address concerns, safe space training. Are those still unique? Or do they belong with another? Maybe community education and development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think it's for both of them? I think yeah. value to the LGBT community and you guys are really thoughtful about saying there's already all these organizations out there doing lots of good work so what could the Pride Center do that would be a value and you responded by saying community education and development promote health and wellness support advocacy efforts provide a home for the LGBT community provide a safe gathering space provide current and comprehensive directory of resources research and maintain demographics and history of LGBT community. So what are you really happy to see up there? Provide a home for mm -hmm. That's what I think in, in the years I've been in San Antonio, it's 36 now, uh, and I've seen the community in various phases and this is what we've needed all along uh, I think a place where that would be help a hub a hub <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> advice do you have for the Pride Center as they continue their planning process to develop a strategic plan for the next three to five years for the organization? Keep you. <laughs> <laughs> they got me. I got me. <laughs> I, think, I think there needs to be... Oh, I'm sorry. No. 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 Um, Two. Three. I think that there needs to be a real serious conversation in the community about where the space should be. Because I think there are differing there are differing opinions about where the space should be. I know that that, that exists. Um, because some people don't think near the bars is a good idea. Other people think near the bars is essential. Other people think a more free space. So I do think that needs to be worked out somehow. And some consensus because you want to have a space that people are going to use, right? And you want to have a space that's convenient to people. You want to have a space that's on a bus line. I mean, you have to think about all of those sorts of, of things. And so seeing that that's a big part of this conversation about creating that home in a space, where that space is, and, and getting the community support for that space, I think it's going to be great. Support means money, too. Well, yeah, money, too, right? <laughs> so we did a survey. We asked people where their zip code was. And we had around 330 plus LGBT identified individuals answer it. And we have the data, so whoever wants it, just shoot us an email. We do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Yeah, we, we also have demographics, um, income, education data, level. Education so my son's handing out something, two, two pieces of paper right now. One is just um, an evaluation of how your time was spent today, how well this was facilitated, and what you thought about, um, what you thought when you came in and what you might be leaving with. The other is asking you to tell us how you would like to be engaged with the Pride Center going forward and, and what you're willing to do. And it does have a box on there that says, do you have some history or perhaps some information that you can share to help the Pride Center? And of course, you can, you're welcome to um, 
add your contact information. So we're looking for people to attend events, to help with planning, to serve on the board, to provide resources, to provide history. So the second sheet is asking you to um, help articulate that. And the first one is just an evaluation. We do take this feedback very seriously. We summarized it from the first session. There will be a third session. Um, so if you know people that weren't able to come to this session um, or the first session, please, um, Robert, what are the instructions for where to find it? And so if you can go to our Facebook page um, or onto our website, PrideCenterSanAntonio.org, you can RSVP. It's on March 21st, which is uh, two Saturdays from today. And um, that one's going to be held uh, at a Southside location at the Pan Am uh, or Pan American uh, Library off of 35. Um, and so that's there. We also will have uh, Spanish translation available. So if you don't know anybody um, that prefers to speak in Spanish or uh, to participate in Spanish, that is going to be available as well. Um, so that one is March 21st, and that one is from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Um, so we did one in the afternoon and one in the, the evening, or afternoon one in the morning. So, uh, so again, March 21st. So if you know anybody that's interested. Um, and if I may also plug one other thing this weekend, as somebody previously mentioned, um, on Sunday we will be having a, a burlesque uh, show, which is a direct benefit to Pride Center San Antonio. Um, and it's a, a great show. This is the third year that we're putting on the uh, St. Patrick's Day fundraiser. Um, it is Sunday at 6 p.m., I believe. Uh, this Sunday. Yeah. Next Sunday. Not, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry. Not tomorrow. This is next Sunday, the 15th. Um, and on the 15th, and that's at uh, 6. 6 o'clock. And that's at Heat Night Club. Um, and all the dunk, um, all the proceeds from the door and pre-sale tickets go directly to the Pride Center as well. So um, those are complaints. But of course, everything can be found on our Facebook or our website. Any other closing comments from you or your fellow board members? I just want to say thanks for having the meetings all over town. No, I just, well, I guess yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, no, I just yeah. appreciate it. First off, uh, for Robert and Brian for putting these together. Uh, thank you all so much for this. And then also, of course, to Jennifer for providing her time and her expertise. When we had the opportunity to do a pre-planning session with her, we were just wowed. So we knew all of y'all would be too, and, and yeah. she's wonderful. And um, so the, yes. And, and just so you know, at the end of this process, once we do the third one, and then we kind of regroup and figure out how best to disseminate what we learned, and we are going to have a, another meeting, which we hope all of you will be at, and we'll all bring an extra friend or two. We'll have a larger, that's the plan, I believe, is to have a large gathering at the end when we actually are able to present what we learned from all three sessions, where we re-invite everybody to come back together. Um, and it'll just be one, but hopefully we can make it, and we'll figure out when time, date and time and location for that. But thank you all so much. Well, thank you. And now, Cast? Um, just so you know, that um, immediately after this, this video will be archived and available online. So if you know people who couldn't be here and couldn't watch it online, or you want to go back and replay it yourself, it will be available on NowCast. Is there a way we can encourage people to share Ideas if they watch it. Yeah. Yes, there's actually there's a message field right next to it on our site. So and even while they're watching, also the comments. <laughs> once once we get it up on YouTube, there will also be YouTube okay. space for YouTube comments. Thank you. Awesome. Well, then that uh, concludes uh, today's session. Again, I appreciate everybody being here. Um, your input is valuable to us. Like I said at the beginning, we don't want to offer services or programming that's not going to be useful to the community. So by y'all yeah. engaging. Yeah. And in being present, that is definitely going to help us out with that. Um, if you could fill out the forms and get those into us, or just leave it on the table, we'll pick them up. If you didn't get a chance to sign in, please do so. Um, that way we can uh, make you aware of any future events um, or programming that we uh, start to offer. So again, thank you all for being here. And I'll have a great session. Great, great, wonderful, beautiful Saturday. I'd like to add one thing. Yes, um, okay. My department members, uh, yeah, we are both arts agencies uh, and artists. Pretty much. Before you make an announcement, please. Again, I work for the city, and we fund arts agencies and art local artists and all. So tomorrow night at the Pegasus from six to nine, one of our artists is going to be performing a one-woman theater piece called "They Call Me the AIDS Lady," 
and it's totally free. She works. She had worked for Beat AIDS, and now she's back with the with the San Antonio AIDS Foundation. So this is based on her life, on her working with youth and working with different demographics throughout the city. And it's a really beautiful piece. It's, it's really really poignant and funny and, and scary and everything. So if you can make it out there, I know not everybody likes London Bar. But this is one of the reasons that, that she's taking the stairs because you don't usually see theater at the party. And, uh, and also she's, and I think on the 21st she's going to be performing it. No, no, it's this Tuesday. She'll be performing it at the Walgreens on Military. And I can't think of the cross street now. But she's going to be performing it in the parking lot at the, at the Walgreens. So if you're interested, you know, let me know, and I'll, I'll give you the information for the one over at the Walgreens if you don't want to go to the bar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.